girls. So good to see you today. I'm so glad that we're able to have this time uh, here at the Children's Bible Time and thank the Lord that God has given us another day. Isn't it a blessing to have another day of life? To be able to maybe to go to school, uh, to be able to see your family, play with your dog, maybe, uh, you know, go outside, throw the baseball around, whatever it may be. I just thank God that God has given us another day of life and another opportunity to be right here at the Children's Bible Time. I I hope that you're excited. I'm excited, and I praise the Lord that God has given us life today. Hey, maybe you have a prayer request that you'd like to share. You can send it right down here at pray at bbcrhill.org, or maybe you even have a praise that you'd like to share. I'd love to hear about your praise because I know that God has been good to you and God has been good to me. And you know why? Because we have a good God, don't we? Absolutely. Hey, uh, I want to share my praise of the week. My praise of the week is, drum roll please. My praise of the week is our military. Now, right here, we're in Richmond Hill, Georgia. And so we, right here at Richmond Hill, Georgia, we have um, a, a, a base called Fort Stewart. And it's not too far from here. And we have uh, a lot of military in our church and uh, really good friends of mine. And I just want to thank the Lord for our military. I thank the Lord for not just for them, but also for their families. And I know right now that some are getting ready to be deployed and uh, going who knows where in our world. And uh, they're going to leave their, their wives, they're going to leave their children behind. And I can tell you that's a great sacrifice. And I just want to say to all of our military uh, out there, thank you so very much for serving our country. Thank you so much for sacrificing your time with your family and, and, and many sacrificing their health, sacrificing their lives. And I can tell you, young people, it is a wonderful thing to be part of the U.S. military. And I just, I hope that you will appreciate them whenever you see them. Maybe, you know, give them a salute, give them a high five, tell them how much you appreciate them. But I thank God that we have soldiers uh, that are willing to give of their life to protect us and, and give our, our, our freedom. And I'm so very thankful for, for, for you out there. I'm thankful for uh, all the work that's been done. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the folks that are in our church uh, that are in the military. And I hope that you have a, a, a wonderful, safe deployment. And uh, thank you again so very much. But we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. And I want to encourage you, uh, boys and girls, to uh, thank the Lord for our military. Father, thank you so much for your love and for your blessings. Thank you for life today. Lord, thank you for the freedom. Lord, thank you for uh, the liberties that we have as Americans. And God, there's been millions of soldiers that have given their life. Lord, they've died, Father, for our freedom. And I thank you that we can be part of a wonderful country. Lord, a place where we can go to church freely. Father, where we can vote, uh, where we can have uh, freedoms. And uh, Lord, we can choose what we want to do with the life that you've given to us. Uh, Lord, we can serve you and praise you being our God and not have to worry about um, um, any kind of issues or problems. Uh, God, I thank you for life and liberty. I thank you for our, our founding fathers. Uh, Lord, I thank you for, uh, Lord, our president. Uh, Lord, for all of our leaders and governmental uh, officials that work hard at, at assuring our religious liberties. And uh, God, we thank you for that. I pray you help these boys and girls that are listening. God, they'll understand and uh, have an appreciation for our military, for our police. Uh, and Lord, for those that are, are working so very hard for our freedoms here as Americans. God, I pray you'd bless this time for our children's Bible time. And uh, Lord, bless your word as it's brought today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, very good. I appreciate that. Hey, let's sing us a song. So Cora, Donnie, Clara, take it away. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to be singing obedience. There's a little bit of spelling in this, but it's really easy once you sing it through once. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately, and joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Let's spell it O B E D I E N C E. 
Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. All right, here we go. It is game time. That's right, it is game time. And here is the game. How long can you say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers? A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. Can you say that without messing it up? I know I cannot. And, uh, you know, I'm not really good with all these tongue twisters, but maybe you are. I bet, I'm bet. i sure some of you guys already know it and have no problem saying it, but I uh, I struggle. So I'm going to give you a little cheat down there, you know, and I'll throw it up there, maybe in a little ticker, and you can read it and try to see how long you can say it or how fast you can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. A peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. And I, I, that's pretty good. Hey, who knew? But see how long you can say that. Maybe challenge your brothers, your sisters, your mom and dad. See how long they can say it or how many times they can say it without messing it up. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. I don't know. See what happens. All right, you guys have fun with that. All right, boys and girls, it's time to sing I Love Him Better Every D-A-Y Who. Are you ready? All right. First time we're not going to spell, second time we will. All right? I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his side, I will abide. I love him better every day. All right, that was easy peasy, right? Now let's try to spell it out, okay? I love him better every D-A-Y. I love him better every D-A-Y. Close by his S-I-D-E, I will A-B-I-D-E, I love him better every D-A-Y. All right, now we got to be those football players. Are you guys ready? Get your muscles out. All right. I love him better every D-A-Y, who? I love him better every D-A-Y, who? Close by his S-I-D-E, I will A-B-I-D-E, I love him better every D-A-Y, who? Good job. All right, boys and girls, for our lesson today, we're going to be looking in Acts chapter 28. And it's a story about Paul. This is the very last chapter in Acts. And so I want you to take your Bible uh, or listen very closely uh, to me while I read it. But I'm, we're going to look in Acts chapter 28 and verse number 1 and read all the way through to verse number 6. So pay special attention at this really, really cool story about what happened to Paul on his way to Rome. Okay? The Bible says, in verse number one, and when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, they came a viper out of the heat, out of fire, and fastened onto his hand. So in other words, a snake jumped up out of the sticks there that he was throwing to the fire. The snake bit a hold of his hand and just latched on. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he escaped the sea, yet ve uh, vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and he felt no harm. Howbeit, they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, they saw no harm come to him. And they changed their minds and said that he is a god. Wow, what an interesting story. This is Paul, and he's a prisoner, and he's going to Rome, and he's going to stand before Caesar, and he's really going to, he's going to go before Caesar, and he's going to preach the gospel. He wants to go, and he wants to tell everybody there in Rome about who Jesus is and what the gospel is. And as he's traveling uh, there on a ship, he comes up to a storm. This storm is so bad. It's called Ecclesidon, or it's some weird name, you know. This storm is like kind of like Hurricane Sally. I mean, it's huge, huge storm. And the storm throws the ship onto some rocks. And, and as the, the winds and as the waves kind of throw it up against the rocks and uh, the, the back of the ship falls, up, 
falls to pieces and the, the ship is just like tearing all the pieces and the, it's going down. And so Paul says, hey, everybody, you better jump on over and you better swim on over to the shore. And there was like a little island there. And, and uh, all the people get out of the ship alive and they make it over to this little island. And then when they're over on this little island, they meet some, some natives, and they're called barbarians here in the Bible. But the barbarians, it just means that the people, it weren't that like they were like barbarians, like awful, mean people. It meant actually that they didn't know like Greek or Latin. It meant that they didn't know their language. So whenever uh, they come to the island, these barbarous people, they meet them, and they're very, really, actually, really nice people. They're really kind people here on the island of Melita. And Melita is a modern-day uh, uh, island called Malta. Um, but it's really cool because this island is about 60 miles um, south of Sicily. And the word Melita, the name of the island, it really means honey. And uh, this island was a really nice place. It was full of honey. It was full of fruit. It was a wonderful place. It's an amazing thing, really. It was really just God's perfect, sovereign will and uh, just the grace of God. How God allowed them, even though they, they were shipwrecked, God allowed them all to be safe, allowed them all to get to shore, and allowed them to just wind up, you know, on this island that was full of fruit, full of vegetables, full of honey, and really full of nice people. I mean, they could have been, you know, on a ship that was like a, a, an island full of man-eaters. I mean, you know, who knows? But we know that God took care of Paul all the way through his life, boys and girls. And no matter what happens to Paul, we know that God's going to take care of him. And no matter what happens to us, we know that God is going to take care of us as well. So they're all there kind of huddled around, you know, because they're freezing cold and shivering, you know. And they got the fire there that these people have built for Paul and for all the other people. And so the Bible says that Paul gets up and he wants to build the fire up a little bit. So he goes over and he grabs some sticks. And he gets these sticks and he throws them down into the fire. And whenever he throws them down into the fire, the Bible says that the viper, the snake, come up out of the fire and latched a hold of, of Paul's hand and, uh, wow, and, 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 and was stuck to him, you know, trying to get all the venom, and, uh, vi uh, uh, venom in Paul's hand to kill him. And so it's crazy. And, and, and I couldn't imagine, you know, how, how, you know, shook up I would be, you know, if a snake bit a hold of my hand, you know, I'm looking down at it. But what does Paul do? What, what is it that, what's his response whenever something happens so um, tragic in his life? Can I tell you, boys and girls, what Paul did is the same thing that we should do. You know what he did? He shook it off. And whenever we find young people, whenever Satan is, is Satan we know is the real true serpent, Whenever that serpent, the devil, wants to grab a hold of us and bite us and hurt us, you know what we need to do? We need to just shake it off. Verse number 5 says this, And he shook off the beast into the fire, and he felt no harm. That's what we need to do. Hey, we don't need to let the devil get the best of us. We don't need to let that old serpent, that old viper, bite a hold of us and get us down at school. Maybe there's somebody at school that's giving you a hard time. Hey, don't fall for those tricks of the devil. You just shake it off. Hey, and can I tell you, expect it. Expect it. Hey, whenever uh, you're going through life and, and you wind up, hey, everything's going good for you. Hey, let me tell you, you expect it, young people. Expect the devil to come and try to punch you in the face and try to latch a hold of you and try to hurt you. Can you think of anybody better nope. than Paul? Can you think of anybody that's a greater Christian that would be on that island, Melita, than Paul? Nope. Absolutely not. But we find that it was Paul. Paul was the only one that day that got bit by a viper. Isn't that something? Can I tell you, you expect the devil to come at your door. Expect for somebody to, to try to try to hurt you or irritate you or try to bring you down. Expect to try to get bit by the devil because I'm telling you, boys and girls, he is real. But just because the devil latches a hold of you, it doesn't mean that he's going to destroy you. You know what you need to do? You just need to shake it off. You got to shake it off. When that joker bites a hold of you, you just throw him right back into the fire in which he came. Don't let people get you down. Maybe this whole thing with the mask. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like them. I don't like a mask. I've got a mask right here I had to wear today. I went somewhere and I had to put on my mask to go in. 
I don't like this. I don't like not being able to breathe. I don't like looking like I'm a surgeon. You know, going. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, I don't. I, I just don't like those things. But you know what? If I'm not careful, I'll let little things like this right here irritate me and just and just bring me down and depress me. Maybe this COVID thing, you know, and the regulations and, and all this mess that we're having to deal with, maybe it's, maybe it's kind of got a hold of you and kind of bringing you down. Can I tell you, with God's help, we need to shake it off. We need to shake it off. That's what Paul did. The second thing that he did is he didn't listen to the barbarians. I thought it was interesting, boys and girls. In verse number four, when they see the, the, the viper come up and grab a hold of him, you know what they said? They said, in verse number four, no doubt this man is a murderer. Say what? No doubt this man's a murderer. Hey, the sea was trying to kill him, but he escaped the sea, and now the snake got a hold of him and is going to kill him. You know what, boys and girls? People are going to say all kinds of things, and people are going to treat you all kinds of different ways. Can I tell you, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Can I tell you the devil is a liar? The devil is a murderer? It's not that people are responsible, boys and girls. Um, yeah, they're responsible for their actions. But let me tell you, it's the devil inside of people that causes them to murder. It's the devil inside of people that causes them to, to, uh, uh, to commit a crime. Uh, every sickness that we face, it's the devil. The devil is the one that is responsible. It's not political, and it's not social, and it's not racial. No, it's the devil. And I want to tell you, you don't listen to the devil. You see things on TV, you see things maybe on your phone, and, and it's disturbing and it's ugly. I want to tell you, it's from the devil. Don't listen to him. They said, oh, for sure he is a murderer. Can I tell you? They didn't know what they were talking about. Nope. And the things we see on, on TV, the things that we hear, um, you know, on, on the news, let me tell you, a lot of times they don't know what they're talking about. Nope. It's not them. It's really him. It's really the devil. And he's after us. He's after to destroy our lives. He's after our, our society. He's after our country. He's after our families. Let me tell you, don't listen to him. And then they say in verse number 6, verse number 6, they change it. They say, wow, wow, this man was bit by a snake and we thought he was a murderer. But, but now we see, no, he's really a god. <laughs> was Paul a god? Got he. No, no. He wasn't a god, but he was full of God. And because he was full of God, that snake had no power over him. And can I tell you, when we are full of God, the snake, the serpent, the devil, he has no power over us either. And can I tell you, whenever the devil is after you and he's trying to attach you, attach himself to you and try to hurt you, shake him off and don't listen to him because he's a liar. There's something else he did. Paul did, that I believe that will encourage you and help you as we go through maybe some difficult days in our life right now. Can I tell you number three? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. What did Paul do whenever he shook that snake off? What did he do? He threw it in the fire. Did he go back? Nope. He didn't go back. He shook that snake off in the fire and he left it right there. He didn't go back and revisit it. He didn't think about it. He didn't go try to kill it for biting him. No. He said, you know what? I know the devil is after me. I know he's trying to harm me, but I'm going to shake him off. I'm not going to listen to him. And I'm just going to forget. I'm going to forget all that maybe he, he got me to do or he got me to think about. I'm just going to leave it all in the past. And sometimes, boys and girls, the devil will strike and the devil will latch a hold and the devil will try to hurt you. And he'll try to get you to do things that you know maybe you shouldn't. Or maybe he'll, you'll, you'll have an attitude, maybe you know that you shouldn't. Can I tell you, boys and girls, we just need to ask God to forgive us. Say, God, forgive me for having that bad attitude. Forgive me for, for not saying the right thing. Forgive me for not doing the right thing. Forgive me for, for having that kind of uh, response. And I, I need God's help to help me. I need God to, to, to help me as I go through my life as well because there's some things that I don't like and the devil really can get, can get the best of me at times. And you know what I need to do? I need to ask God to forgive me. And I need to move on and move past and do the will of God today for my life. That's right. God wants us to do His will. And Paul shook him off. He didn't listen to that devil. He didn't allow him to get the best of him. And Paul went on and did the will of God for his life. I want to tell you, boys and girls, you don't let the past failures and defeats bring you down and hold you down. No, absolutely not. You keep your eyes on Jesus and you get your eyes in the Word of God. And you allow God's Word to live and abide in your heart and your life. And you do His will. And when we mess up, 
We need to go to God and say, Lord, for, forgive me and help me to put all that behind me and move on for you. That's exactly what Paul did, and that's exactly what we need to do as well. Hey, don't let the devil get the best of you today. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us and blessing us with life today. Thank you for the Word of God and for the lesson we, we find in Paul, Paul's life as he went through, uh, Lord, uh, spreading the gospel around the world. Lord, he was trying to do good, but bad things came to him because the devil's real. And the devil is real today, and he is working. He is alive uh, in our society today, in our world today. And, Lord, I know that he wants to bring these boys and girls down. He wants to defeat them and destroy them. But, Father, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. And we know that if we're Christians, you're living inside of us. And, Lord, if there's a boy or girl listening to me and they're not Christians, Lord, I pray the day they would receive you as their Savior. Lord, they call upon you by faith and trust you as their Savior. Lord, that they would not be full of the devil, but they would be full of you. And that they could, Lord, do a great work for you. They could be used of you, just like you used Paul. God, I thank you. Lord, though the devil is strong, you're greater. And Father, I pray you'll help us, Lord, to move beyond our failures and our faults. And Lord, cast our eyes upon you. Lord, to do a great work for you. Lord, we certainly need you, need your help. Pray you would fill us with your spirit. Guide us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for tuning in today to the Children's Bible Time, and I hope to see you very soon. God bless you. Thank you for my lesson, Miss Amy. Hey, dude. Oh, hey, Bart. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm just here for my piano lesson from Miss Amy. Oh, I love Miss Amy. She's the best. Yeah, she's great. How long have you been taking piano? Uh, two, three weeks. Only two or three weeks? I've been doing it for a whole year. Whoa, you must be really good. Oh yeah, you want to see some of my skills? Let's see it. <laughs> wow, dude, that, that was pretty good. Yeah, I know. I mean, I have been playing for a year, so what do you expect? Yeah, that was, that, that was okay. You want to give it a shot? Well, I have only been playing for two weeks, but why not? Yes, let's go, man. What would you think, dude? I mean, you were okay. You're not... Fantastic. Did, did you think I did good? I, I mean, for two weeks, it's Was okay. it all right? I mean, you did better than me, okay? I did? I mean, you've only been playing, you've been playing for a year, and I've only been playing for two weeks. Yeah, I know, okay? I'm not great at the piano, and you must be better than me. I got, like, no talents at all, okay? Look at this. I'm, my hair, it doesn't even, I try so hard to do my hair, and it doesn't work. And when, you want to see what happens when I try and play the piano? Nothing. Nothing happens. I got zero talents. Whoa, whoa, dude. Chill out. You have many talents. Like what? Well, first of all, you can peel a banana with your feet. Yeah, that's true. I can do that. And you can climb a tree better than anyone else I know. Yeah, I guess you're right. And you are one of the best at the Donkey Kong video game. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite pastimes, of course. Yeah, it's like the story in the Bible. When God gave one man five talents, and another man two talents, and the last man th one talent. It doesn't matter how many talents you have, it just matters how you use them, and you should use them for the Lord. Yeah, that's right. I guess I never thought about that. Maybe I'm not great at the piano, but I can use some of my other talents for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like uh, another talent I just thought of. Your fried peanut butter banana sandwiches. Oh yeah, I love those. Yeah, you know how to make a mean one. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You think you can uh, make one right now? Are you serious? Yeah, man. Awesome. Yes, let's go to my house and make some sandwiches. Good deal. Thank you for my... Thank you for my lesson, Miss Amy. Put your head down, Bart. Your Bart, dude. I want to check and see your... I swear, if I was not <laughs> recording... <laughs> My arm was... Dude, I almost like...
Yeah, and instead of a C, I went here. Yeah. That was very nice. Yeah, cool. Obedience is yes. That helped me on my spelling yeah, test one year. Yeah, that helped me too. It did. All right. Uh, I always get mixed up. Uh, o b e d i e n c e.